Hello, everybody. This is part two of our chapter nine cellular respiration notes. I want to get right to it because I know I couldn't wait to hear the details of this process. It is pretty incredible and relate. All right, so here's where we left off. Taking a closer look at glycolysis, remember this is the first step in really both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Because remember, glycolysis happens with or without oxygen. Literally means the splitting of sugar, happens in the cytosol of the eukaryotic cell. And really we can summarize a couple of things here. First, overall glycolysis makes two ATPs. Now, it uses two at the beginning, but then it makes four by the time you're done. So overall, you see there's a net two ATPs made, right? You, you use two, but then you make four. So overall, from start to finish, you've made two ATPs. We've also made two NADH molecules. So again, these are electron carriers. Uh, they're going to dump electrons into the electron transport chain. Uh, which, will, which will make us a lot of ATPs in the end. And our one glucose molecule is turned into two pyruvate molecules. So here's a little bit of an overview or a summary, I should say, down here in your notes of what glycolysis gets you. Now, in the presence of oxygen, these pyruvate molecules enter the mitochondria. And by the way, mitochondrion is singular, mitochondria, IA at the end is plural, in case you ever wondered why sometimes you see them written different. But those pyruvates go through a process called pyruvate oxidation. As they enter the mitochondrion, they are turned into acetyl coenzyme A molecules, which we slightly abbreviate to acetyl CoA molecules. And it happens, this process, as the pyruvates enter the inner part of the mitochondrion, known as the matrix. So remember, there's two pyruvates that enter the mitochondrial matrix. And as that happens, a couple CO2s are given off. Two more NADHs are made. That's good, because they're going to make us ATPs in the end. And those pyruvates turn into acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Again, everything here is times two. There's two pyruvates enter. The two CO2s and two NADH are generated. CO2, of course, being a waste product that diffuses into our blood eventually and we breathe out. And then there'd be two acetyl-CoA molecules here. These acetyl-CoA molecules are gonna kick off the Krebs cycle reactions, which happen in the mitochondrial matrix. So let's see, if we look at the fact that there's two pyruvates turning into two acetyl-CoAs that enter the Krebs cycle, you could see that two ATPs would be made six NADHs and two FADH2s, which are like NADHs, electron carriers. So this is for one pyruvate, which happens one turn of the Krebs cycle this happens. Well, there's two turns that have to occur for the second pyruvate. So that's why I multiplied these products by two. So again, this is what happens for one pyruvate turning into one acetyl-CoA. Uh, might be easier just to multiply everything by two since there's two pyruvates. Two NADHs, two CO2s are made here doing pyruvate oxidation. They turn into two acetyl CoAs, which generate four CO2s, six NADHs, two ATPs are made, and two FADH2s as we go around these Krebs cycle reactions. Now, again, this is only in the presence of oxygen that this will happen. Okay. Guys, way more detail than you'd ever have to remember um, for this course. I remember my freshman bio course in college, I did have to memorize these steps. Not only the intermediate molecule names, but also what uh, the name of each enzyme that catalyzes each step. And don't lose sight of that. You know, glycolysis has about 10 chemical reactions that happen from glucose to pyruvate. Each step catalyzed by a different enzyme. The Krebs cycle has about eight reactions, each step catalyzed by a different enzyme. Crucial, remember we talked about how important enzymes were to life 
Well, again, here's a whole bunch of chemical reactions that couldn't happen fast enough without enzymes. Right, now we're getting to the final stage, which is the electron transport chain. Um, it's made up of many molecules, some of which are called cytochrome proteins. Um, some of these molecules are actually also proton pumps. So we learned about active transport. Remember that there were proteins that could use ATP or some form of energy to pump molecules or ions from a low to a high concentration. We could accumulate somewhere. And so basically, to cut to the chase a little bit, the NADHs and the FADH2s, they dump their high energy electrons into this electron transport chain of molecules. This is the hot potato part, which I mentioned in the other video. Those electrons get passed from molecule to molecule to molecule. And like a hot potato, they're giving off energy as they pass from each molecule to the next. So all these redox reactions occur. The energy from these electrons is used to power the proton pumps. So from the mitochondrial matrix, we are gonna pump H plus ions into the inner membrane space of the mitochondria. And we'll diagram this and it'll make more sense uh, when we do that. Down here at the bottom, here's why we need oxygen. Here's the oxygen gas molecule, O2. It receives the electrons at the end of the chain, a couple hydrogens pop on, and we're forming water. So think about your ingredients and your, your reactants and your products for cellular respiration. Going in with CO2 and water. Excuse me, check that. Going in, the reactants were glucose and oxygen. Well, glucose, we started out breaking down in glycolysis. Here's where we need the oxygen. And the products were CO2 and water. Well, the CO2 we gave off through pyruvate oxidation, through the Krebs cycle, and the water is formed here at the end. There's our other product. This talks a little bit about the chain. Here is the amazing molecule that actually creates ATPs through oxidative phosphorylation. <clears throat> The process of doing this is known as chemiosmosis. I don't think it's a great name because chemi refers to what? Chemical? Well, these are all chemicals. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. This doesn't involve the diffusion of water, but it's a bad name, but it's called chemiosmosis. The H pluses, the hydrogen ions, are pumped out of the matrix. We accumulate them outside the mitochondrial matrix. And then we allow them to diffuse back into the matrix through a very special channel protein known as ATP synthase. So here it is, ATP synthase. Here's the space between the inner mitochondrial membrane and the outer mitochondrial membrane, known as the intermembrane space. We pump the H pluses into this space and then allow them to diffuse back into the matrix from where they started through ATP synthase. Well, the thing is, every time an H plus diffuses through ATP synthase, an ADP combines with a third phosphate and is turned into an ATP. This is where 32 of the 36 ATPs get made in this final step, chemiosmosis involving the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. So here's kind of a combination diagram. You can see NADH and FADH2 dumping their electrons, which go down the chain. H pluses get pumped into the inner membrane space. Then they diffuse back in through ATP synthase. And as they do, ATPs get made. So all of this is how, or, or lumped together is oxidative phosphorylation. It's made up of this electron transport chain plus ATP synthase, producing ATPs specifically through chemiosmosis. So that's aerobic cellular respiration. So just to kind of recap a little bit, um, the energy from glucose, the electrons were stored as NADHs, which then were dumped into an electron transport chain, which pumped protons, H plus ions, one way, 
when they diffuse back, ATPs get made. So notice here it says about 38 ATPs. And if we look at this diagram, it says about 36 or 38 ATPs are made. Well, glucose makes two. The Krebs cycle makes two, that's four. Chemiosmosis generates 34. Well, geez, that would give you 38 ATPs. But turns out these NADHs that we made up here in the cytosol through glycolysis have to get into the mitochondria through shuttle molecules. Well, it turns out that there's a toll to pay. Each NADH to get in charges a 1 ATP toll or gets charged a 1 ATP toll. So it takes two ATPs to get those two NADHs in, which is a fair cost because remember, each NADH is going to make you three ATPs in the end. And each FADH2 is going to make you two ATPs in the end. So again, if we were to total things up, two from glycolysis, two from Krebs cycle, Six NADHs, well, again, that's going to make you three each, so that's 18. Two FADH2s make you two each, so that's four. So two, four, 22, plus these NADHs, another six, 28, 32, right? 32 total from, from just this process. So 36 is the best answer overall. You know, 38 is fine, um, but 36 is more realistic. And the actual number is really 34 point something, because it turns out that the inner mitochondrial membrane is a little bit leaky with those H plus ions. In other words, a few H pluses sneak back in without going through ATP synthase, and so you don't quite make the full 36 uh, that technically you could or should. All right, so this now gets into fermentation, which is an anaerobic process. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. I think it's a nice stopping point. And we will talk about the anaerobic process in the next video.